over a bridge of wings, our good neighbor Australia, the land down under, draws ever closer. Today by air, it is but a matter of hours to reach Sydney, 17th largest city in our changing world. Australia, as large as the United States, has a population only equal to that of New York City. One out of every five Australians lives here in Sydney. They're an outdoor kind of people, breezy and democratic like Americans, but they're a generation closer to their pioneering ancestors. They have a strong feeling about cooperation. Yes, these cobbers, that's their pet slang expression for pals, these cobbers are a fair dinkum people. Fair dinkum is another pet term for something that's really okay. And that's how you'll find them. A fair dinkum people whose diligent hard work has built a fair dinkum land. They're quick to adopt the latest American ideas in business, transportation, and in industry. The busy port more than proved its title, Terminal of the Pacific, during World War II. Most homes are situated within easy reach of the beautiful harbor with its many fine, free beaches. Ice cream cones are popular, especially when the flags of rival surf club teams are raised in the parade of the water carnival. Good sportsmanship and the love of fair, hard competition is a national characteristic. Australia is the continent of sunshine. Big cities average six sunny hours a day throughout the year. Life-saving patrols first originated on Australian beaches. The colorful parade of athletes is only the beginning of the water carnival. It's not only team against team, it's man against the elements. The fellow who invented the term sea level never rode a boat in surf like this. It's all uphill. Rooting for a favorite team is called barracking. This is one place where you're expected to put your oar in or you go down instead of just downhill. These are the boys who make the waters safe for water jockeys like these. They think nothing of fighting their way a mile or more out to sea for the thrill of a breathless race to the beach on the crest of a wave. Some go in, some go down, and some go up. More than half the population lives in the large coastal cities and towns. Head inland, and soon you enter a startling, unexpected world where time seems to stop. A vast, silent expanse an unbelievable stretch of two million square miles, which Australians call the outback. Often dry as brick, it grows just enough vegetation to feed the famous merino sheep, whose woolly backs support the nation's number one industry. Tops in world production, ranchers clip almost one billion pounds of fine wool a year from these hardy animals. Lonely ranchers declare a holiday when an occasional traveler visits. Next door neighbors are often a hundred miles apart. That, of course, is in the populated areas. But in the dried up core of the outback, 
where burning temperatures drop to zero at night. You can fly a thousand straight miles without seeing a single house. The outback is a frontier which is gradually being conquered. Today, pioneer outposts are inspired by prosperous towns like Broken Hill, which earlier settlers developed. Mining, agriculture, and cattle are next in importance to sheep. A blue ribbon goes a long way in making up for those lonely outback nights. Cattlemen are the same the world over. Ribbons, that's sissy stuff. They're not pinning any more ribbons on me. Horses, almost a million and a half of them. Nearly everyone in the outback is an expert horseman or horsewoman. And flying hooves are always thrilling. But on Saturdays, wherever there's a racetrack, it's the order of the day. Up again. And they're racing this time. Amelia getting a great run through over on the inside is racing up to the leaders. And Amelia now heads them off as they come down towards the home turn. She is the leader from over on the outside, Miss Trim. They are followed by Perinda. Sir Actor improving his position. Nocolo also improving his position. Over on the outside, sticking and making up a lot of ground. They dash into the straight with Amelia now showing the way to uh, Royal Enfield also putting in a run. Sir Actor over on the rail. Miss Trim over on the outside, followed by Peter Peck and Perinda. Inside the furlong post, Amelia has the lead of a length and a half over Miss Trim. Nocolo in third place at the moment, followed by Sir Actor and over on the outside, Gary Marie. But running past them, and Amelia wins them. Our second would be Miss Prim. Well, that's what the sign says. But personally, I think that track announcer came in first. You're looking at Australia's famous laughing man. He's a sure sign that the annual fair is on. Families from the four corners of the nation are here to see what's going on in their country. From Mula Bula to Wagga Wagga, they come to learn about the latest ideas, from machinery to building a brighter future for Junior. But there's plenty of time for relaxation and sharp competition. These rugged sports illustrate a phase of their hardy pioneer spirit. Nature almost won that time. The winner, he really knocked his block off. Yes, they're sports-loving people, industrious, ingenious. Their flying doctor service combines radio to break the terrible outback silence and power to call for help in time of need. And planes for medicines and flying doctors to whom danger and heroism are the ordinary stuff of life. Because of this unique service, pioneers can raise families and build communities without fear of disease and isolation. They walk with confidence in their destiny. Keen eyes are focused on international affairs. Their modern, ever-increasing living standard is reflected at night as well as by day. Yes, young Australia is a bright light, a fair dinkum land in our changing world.